And welcome inside of the press box here at Crooked Oak High School. I'm Greg Sherman. This is a critical game tonight for both teams as Stillwater's coming off of a pummeling 34-7 loss to Oklahoma City, while Norman also fell last week and they dropped to 1-5 on the season. Let's take a look at those standings presented by our friends at Fox 25. Now, these are updated through the end of uh, our early game today. Oklahoma City, a winner earlier today, 6-1. Most likely they're going to be first place heading into the playoffs. Stillwater's at 4-1. Shawnee and Midwest City at 2-4. Norman is right now bringing up the rear at 1-5. No more playoff clinching scenarios for tonight, but a critical game as Norman's trying to stay out of the uh, last spot and find a way to get in. Midwest City is off tonight, and uh, with Midwest City off, we invited Dennis Albert, the head coach of Midwest City, into the booth to uh, be an analyst tonight. Dennis, uh, welcome to the booth. Uh, this is a rematch of a game earlier this season when Norman drove several times inside of the Stillwater 15 but couldn't score, and that's how they ended up losing. What are going to be some of the keys in tonight's game? Well, number one, Norman's going to have to run the ball a lot. They, they, they don't do very well passing. They have a new quarterback, so um, uh, that's going to be one of their, their big deals. They can run the ball, but uh, if they can pass, they need to pass short and, and keep driving the ball, keep moving downfield. How hard is it uh, for Norman being Stillwater's first opponent after Stillwater got lit up and blown out last week by the Gunners and Stillwater's going to be looking for revenge? How tough is that? It's going to be real tough, but you, you got to look at both, both sides of the ball. I mean, uh, the Stillwater loss and Norman loss, and, and they're both looking. Norman has to win a game. You know, they have to win another game to stay in there. And Stillwater, all they have to do is, you know, uh, put, put one on the board. That's basically it. But it doesn't mean anything to them, but they're still going to be fired up to play. Norman's lost four in a row since their win over Midwest City earlier this season. Midwest City beat Norman last week. For Norman, this may be their last chance to uh, win a ball game as they'll finish up with Shawnee next week. So coming up next here on OKFootball.net, it's going to be Bedlam Part 2 as Stillwater takes on Norman. And we're back at Crooked Oak High School ready to start game two of week number eight. It is Bedlam part two as Stillwater takes on Norman. And right away, Nor Stillwater takes the opening kickoff up past the 50-yard line. Penalty flag on the play as Galon Burris, number 85, runs that punt, the uh, kickoff up to the 49-yard line. And we had David Potter in the booth as an analyst in game number one today with Oklahoma City and Shawnee. And now tonight we have Dennis Albert for your listening and viewing pleasure. Dennis, uh... Head coach of Midwest City, you guys are off this week. Dennis, thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you for having me. And uh, Dennis, it's a little unique having, uh, isn't it a little unique uh, being in, having a headset on, having to uh, talk, analyze the game instead of just uh, worrying about your team? Yeah, it's, it's a little better this way. <laughs> and we've Maybe got I'll, a, I'll look at a career later. Yeah, look at a career, perfect. And we've got a block in the back against Stillwater, so that's going to, that will drop the, uh, that will move him back a little bit, but still an excellent kickoff return by Galen Burris as Greg Sherman and Dennis Albert joining you from the booth. David Potter is uh, still up here with us, although he has now moved over to shooting game number two. D David did a pretty good job in game number one. and Now we're ready to see, Dennis, if you can match your uh, assistant coach. Well, I'll do my best. So Stillwater is going to take over first down in ten. Talked to Jeff Tabish during pregame today, and... Jeff told us that he's now going. He's now finally got his uh, quarterback situation set up as uh, Brandon Ingham, number nine, will be starting tonight. He was the original start at the beginning of the season, but was lost due to an injury for a good chunk of the uh, season. Chuck Ferguson was behind center for a while, but now Ingham is back uh, under center. Terrence Burris is uh, the running ba is back in the backfield, and he's calling for a timeout already. Just eight seconds into the ball game, and Dennis, let's get into some of the. Uh, Key points of the ball game. Now, Stillwater got blown out badly by the Gunners last week. How important is it for them to get off to a good start tonight? They really got to get off to a good start. They got to start out, you know, they got to set the tone with their defense. Once they do that and they get their offense rolling, they'll be good to go. Now, Norman has been struggling as of late. They've averaging not even 10 points. Of, they're not. They're averaging only 10 points a ball game by far the uh, fewest in the league. They actually dominated the line of scrimmage against Norman, or against uh, Stillwater, excuse me, the first meeting of the season. How important is it for them to actually, when they get down into the red zone, actually score? Well, if they can run the ball effectively, they'll be good to go. They, they're really going to have to concentrate on the pass. Their passing is really not that great. But since, they, I mean, they, they've got a new quarterback. So uh, last week, let, let's see if he can, uh, you know, stay in the pocket and do some damage because at the end of the game, he did a good job. Terrence Burris takes the handoff, gets all the yardage, gets... Uh, back on the Norman's side of the field as he's going to pick up nine yards. About eight, nine yards. No hash marks here, so we always have to guesstimate. It's going to bring up second down and 
Second down in two weather conditions, just like we had the first game. Not a cloud in the sky, probably right around 70 degrees as we're going to have our final regular season game under the lights tonight. We'll be, have night games come back for the playoffs in a few weeks, which Midwest City is hoping to be a part of. It's going to be second down and one as we're 45 seconds into the ha into the game. Burris is going to take the handoff, gets right up to the line of scrimmage. going to be about half a yard short. Bring up third down and short, and we'll take a uh, look at the standings. And uh, what when we take a look at him, you'll see that Shawnee had a chance to clinch a playoff spot today, but we're blown out 28 to nothing by the Gunners, so they're 2-4, and four, tied with Midwest City. Norman, if they can get a win tonight, an upset, they'd be back to within half a game of that uh, pack. And Dennis, for Norman's sake, how important is it for them to uh, win this game and stay in the race? It's really important. Anytime you can get another win, especially to a team with this number two, uh, it's, it's going to br bring up the morale. Next week, they'll go into the, uh, the game playing uh, a, a lot tougher. And that will be against Shawnee next week, as that will likely be, li if Shawnee beats Norman, likely that'll put sh that will put Shawnee in. That will almost certainly put Midwest City in. We'll talk about next week's schedule later on. There's the pitch handoff to Burris. That was a first down, and Burris gaining more yardage, crossing inside of the 40, down to about the 37. Gain about nine, and Dennis, I don't know if you're noticing, but uh, we're starting to see uh, Stillwater going into their favorite offense, and that is run, 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 and take as much time off the clock. Well, if you can do it and it works, let's keep on doing it. You know, that's that's my philosophy. So Stillwater does a real good job in it, and uh, they did it the first time they played. So uh, if they keep it up, they, they're going to have an effective running game. This might be just a running ball game. Now, when you guys played Stillwater, uh, we'll get to back. We'll get to your meeting earlier in the season when you guys. Uh, Actually, we have an official timeout. Well, we have that moment. Uh, when you guys played him, you only played him once this year. Close game. Uh, fell down 13 to nothing in the first quarter, but fought back, fought back, and lost 16 to nine. How tough of a, how? What have you been able to take out of that game and being able to uh, follow Stillwater for the uh, for the close of the season? Well, we let them get away with a couple good ones at the beginning of the game, and then we started shutting them down. And our defense stepped up. Uh, I think at that time our offense wasn't really playing. Uh, up to par and now they started moving the ball a little more effectively so this next game might be a really good one speaking of speaking of uh moving the ball stillwater moves the ball and they pick up another first down as they're doing one of their patented stillwater outlaw drivers where they run and don't let your opponent get on the board you guys will see stillwater next week so i'm pretty sure you'll be over there making a couple of uh notes for the uh for next week look a little cheat sheet definitely as uh, i see jeff tabish strolling around about the 40 yard line just uh trying to figure out what the wind is Obviously trying to figure out should he need to get a field goal attempt in there. And, ooh, we have movement. Uh, one of the Norman players, number 24, Caleb Watts, he, he not only jumped the uh, line of scrimmage, I think he uh, almost jumped out of the stadium. And he was drawn uh, into the neutral zone, so it's a false start for Stillwater. It's going to back him up five yards, first down and 15. Right now, Stillwater has 21 yards on the ground, all by Terrence Burris. Norman has not seen the ball yet tonight. And uh, Dennis, as always, anytime, uh, anytime you've got anything to add, feel free to add, feel free to uh, bring her on in. As it's going to be first down at 15, 11:45 to go here in the first quarter. No score. Ball is just inside of the 40. Hand off to Belleville. Cross to the 35, 30. Bowling over tacklers. Nice gain as he's able to, as he's able to pick up 11 on the play, and that's going to make it second down and shorts for Belleville. Going to bring up second down and fours. We're about four minutes into the uh, four minutes into the ball game here, and this is not a good. This is this is not a this is not the start that Norman wanted to see. They could not afford to allow Stillwater to drive down the field early in the ball game. High pitch to Burris. Burris takes it down, breaking tackles, and he is gone. Ten, five, touchdown, Stillwater. Terrence Burris with a touchdown run. 29-yard touchdown run on that play for Terrence Burris, and Stillwater does exactly what they want to do, get the uh, early touchdown on the board. Dennis, how was, how, uh, how was he able to score that touchdown? Well, that, that, their defense has, has got to play a little more uh, discipline because that, their, their end came off the side over there, and he rushed, he got beat. So if they can play a little bit more discipline, they might be able to stop him, but right now it looks like they're moving the ball really good. So Stillwater gets the early lead, 409 in, and Ryan Henderson, as usual, in to attempt the extra points. As 
That drive went 60 yards. And the uh, we got penalty flag on the play as the snap is muffed. Henderson only able to fall on it. Let's check the uh, penalty marker. Ken Stewart, as usual, is our referee for all of the uh, OMFL games. As Burris had 49 yards on that uh, on that drive. And we'll check the penalty flag. It's looking like the initial signal is against Norman. Let's double check. And it's going to be encroachment against Norman. So that'll make it half the distance to the goal. And I would let's see if uh, Tabish stays with Henderson on the field. And looks like he will. As Henderson is one of the uh, top kickers in the league this year, along with the uh, kicker from Shawnee, that's Chad Thomas. High snap, kick is down, it is up, it is good! We have 10 minutes, 51 seconds remaining in the first quarter, and our score is Stillwater 7, Norman nothing. Back here at Crooked Oak High School, taking a look at uh, Terrence Burris getting his uh, groove on a little bit. He got his groove on on that last drive, 49 yards by himself on that drive, the last 28 on the touchdown. Stillwater with the early 7 to nothing lead. Norman's going to see the ball for the first time tonight. Is Ryan Henderson ready to kick off? Got Little Mac number one back deep along with Victor Perez for the Nitro. Short kick, not going to make it anywhere near there. Fielded by one of the upmen. That is Farley, or Arthur Brewer fields it. Trying to turn the corner, 40, 45. Slam down right about the 45-yard line, and that's going to be... That'll bring up the uh, first... First down and 10 for Normans. We'll see them on offense for the first time tonight. And Dennis, tell me uh, a little bit about the uh, keys to the Norman offense tonight. Well, like I said earlier, they're going to have to run the ball effectively, and they do that well. So uh, we're going to see uh, on this first drive uh, whether they're going to be able to keep that momentum or whether they're going to be stopped. Now, we've noticed, actually, I don't know if you've noticed, uh, Dennis or uh, David, my sponsor, we, we're noticing a lot, a lot the uh, Norman sideline starting to dwindle a little bit, not just with fans, but... Uh, with players too, have you noticed? Have you heard of anything or noticed of anything uh, going on with them, Dennis? I really haven't. I really haven't been keeping up with uh, you know their sidelines and who they have and who they've lost. But uh, I do know that they're going to have to keep their head up and keep their momentum going because I know that with with a one and five record, it's really hard to keep your players wanting to come back. Josh Huckabee, number fourteen, in at quarterback. He was out last week. Actually, suffered a. Uh, work-related injury on his uh, job that he has during the week and w did not play last week, but he is back under center. Huckabee had a, was actually our player of the game when uh, Norman beat Midwest City for their only win of the season back in week 3, 20-16, and he's obviously going to be one of the important factors if Norman's going to stay in this game. Huckabee rolling off to his right. Pass is caught. That's a screen pass to David Pritchard. And that's going to be a... Uh, Short gain. Now, I've got David Pritchard li listed as a uh, as a lineman, and he is actually slow getting up. And it looks like he's favoring his right knee. As uh, Jackie Smith is coming out to look at his guy, and we're gonna have an uh, injury timeout here on the field. We're gonna we'll keep it right here as he's gonna be helped off the field. That is 56, David Pritchard, and he's listed as a lineman, so he must have either switch positions or checked in as an eligible receiver because there was no penalty flag on there for uh, illegal touching. It's going to be a one yard uh, pass on or it's going to be let's see it's about a two yard gain on the play they're listing it as three yards. It's going to be second down and nine and it's not going to be one for one for two yards. I know that's not significant Dennis but at least he's completed his first pass tonight which he's had trouble getting off to good starts. Well that's been uh, that's been the case, but uh, he's a good quarterback. He knows that he, he, him coming off an injury is going to help them a lot because last week they had a new quarterback in. So him coming off an injury is going to help them a whole lot. Second down and nine. Actually, we'll call it second down and eight. Fakes the handoff to Perez. Huckabee rolling out to his left, trying to find a receiver down deep. Throws his short pass. Is complete. That's going to be enough for a first down on the far sideline. Caught by number 85. That is Josh Sparks. And Huckabee's now two for two and. Like we said, these like like you said, Dennis, all these little uh, pass completions have got to be helping his confidence out. 
All you need is five yards, five, five, and you got a first down. So if he can keep this going, he'll be good. Um, I, I noticed that they haven't started with their running game yet, but uh, that's the thing you want to establish first before you, you know, start passing. But since their passing game's working, let's see if it keeps on. Nine, nine twenty-five remaining here in the first quarter. Stillwater drove down the field and got their usual Stillwater special long drive, ending in a touchdown run. It's going to be first down and ten for the Nitro. Huckabee throws a quick slant, passes behind his receiver. That is Jared Singer. It's going to be incomplete. That will bring up second down and 10. As uh, we're taking a look here at some of Norton's past results, they did get a touch. They lost to you guys last week, but they got, they got a touchdown, which was their first offensive game, one in about five weeks, although that was in garbage time. They really have not scored a touchdown on offense outside of garbage time since the week three battle against you guys in the first the first meeting when they scored a late touchdown in the final two minutes of that ball game to beat you guys. Second down and ten. Not ripping on Midwest City. Just making sure that that's the last time they scored. Floating pass and that's going to be intercepted I think. Now it's going to be incomplete as that was just dropped there. That incomplete As that's as uh, Gavon Burris, I believe, was the in the uh, cornerback there. So Huckabee, after getting completing his first two passes, now he's thrown two straight incompletions. He's right now two for four for 11 yards. It's gonna be third down and ten as we have 9:04 to play here in the first quarter. Beautiful sunset uh, shaping up off to the west, which is to our right, which is where Norman is driving in right now. Nitro need to get in, need to get down to about the 32 to keep the uh, drive going. Huckabee looking to throw. He's under pressure, and he is going to be sacked. And I th and he threw the ball, and that should be either a uh, in the grasp or intentional grounding. And it looks like Dennis. I don't see a flag out there. I thought he was clearly in the tackle box. Well, that looks like it was intentional grounding. It didn't make it past the line of scrimmage, and it, and he was in the grasp, but still, that should have been intentional grounding. So Norman's going to catch a break there. Three straight incompletions by Huckabee. Still no rushing attempts as of yet. Let's see if uh, Jackie Smith and Robert Dennis decide to uh, punt away or if they're going to try to make an early stand and go for it. Their line is definitely going to have to give their quarterback a little more time to throw the ball. I mean, that pocket's there. He needs to step up. He keeps trying to roll out, but at the same token, I haven't seen him start their running game yet, and that's what's going to help him out with the pass. Well, I doubt we'll see a running play here. It's going to be fourth down, and beware of, we'll have to beware of the fake here as uh, Singer is back to punt for the Nitro. And Matt Taylor, number 19, back deep. Stillwater doesn't bring a rush. Taylor gets a pretty good punt away. Or Singer, excuse me. It's going to take a Nitro hop. Nitro going to have a shot at downing it, and they will. Outstanding. Nitro going to down at the four-yard line. Dennis Albert says outstanding, and that's always a good thing. As the clock stops with 8.41 to go here in the first quarter, Stillwater still leading it up 7-0. Back here at Crooked Oak High School taking a look at head coach slash defensive coordinator Jeff Tavish, and he's got to be happy with the way his team played on that last drive as they were able to, they gave up a couple of first downs to the Nitro, but were able to stop them, and now they get the ball back. Although they are backed up inside of their own uh, five-yard line. Run goes nowhere. We've got a penalty flag on the play. And uh, Dennis, what are some? I gotta ask you, if you're a coach and you're inside your own five-yard line, what are you, what are you trying to do when you're first down and backed up really deep? You're trying to get some cushion so you can either, either pass if you're do, if you have an effective running game, then you can get that cushion and pass and move the ball downfield. Being that close to the end zone, if they stop you, you're really gonna have a hard time. Any time, even if you punt and if you don't get it past the 50, then there's not gonna be much. They're still gonna have good field position. And a face mask penalty on the play as that's gonna that will give Stillwater some breathing room. We we saw a lot of face mask penalties earlier in our in our first ball game. I know Dennis, you weren't here for that, but uh, BJ was telling BJ Thomas was telling us during post game that the uh, a little bit of a little thing he's got to work on finishing the tackling. But uh, he told us he's he's gonna keep a lot of his players out for that final game against Midwest City in week number ten. Not trying to give you uh, insider information, Dennis, but. He told us that he wants to make sure that his troops are healthy for the uh, playoffs, which will start I three weeks from tonight. So, well, I can definitely understand that. That that makes a lot of sense. So we've got it now. It's going to be first down and seven. The uh, so down you don't see that often. Ingham trying to roll out. Now he's going to actually. It was a handoff to Jerwin Johnson. 
Johnson gets up to about the 15-yard line. That should be enough to give the uh, Outlaws a first down, and they are at least out of the shadow of their own end zone. Gain of nine on the play for Jerwin as they're now up to 69 yards of offense. And uh, I know, Dennis, you've got to be watching this game cringing already, seeing Stillwater getting their, uh, their uh, running game established early. That's actually a good thing. I mean, but the thing about it is that Norman's defense has got to step it up a little more. They haven't really been doing it. That was a good opportunity for them to step up and stop them right there so they can get good field position. And Stillwater coming into tonight's game because of that blowout loss to the Gunners. They're actually only plus seven in point differential. The Gunners through today's game, they're actually plus 116. And for our viewers at home wondering what that means, should the Gunners and, should the Gunners and Outlaws finish tied as it's going to be second down or first down, there's the handoff. Up to about the 20-yard line. Belleville with a uh, carry. Now, should Oklahoma City and Stillwater finish tied, because they split their season series, they will go to point differential, and Oklahoma City is dominating that. So unless um, the only way that Stillwater is likely going to get that number one seed is if uh, either Oklahoma City w loses a game or if Stillwater wins out and blows their th final three opponents out, which so far tonight, this does have at least the early indications of a possible blowout with the uh, Stillwater establishing the line of scrimmage. It is still early, though. So we second down and five. There's the pitch. I believe that's Robert Earl Johnson, number 31, on the hand on the uh, carry. Let's double check. And it is, and that's going to give Stillwater a first down. Now, the thing that we noticed in our first game today between Oklahoma City and St and uh, Shawnee, excuse me, and I know David's now in the headset, so he wouldn't be able to, to uh, comment, but Oklahoma City got an early touchdown and started forcing turnovers. In fact, they forced seven Shawnee turnovers today in that 28 to nothing win. And obviously, turnovers will be an uh, important thing for the Nitro to avoid to continue to, keep, to, continue to establish some sort of an uh, offensive attack. So first down and 10 after that run by Johnson, 11 yards. Stillwater already at 85 yards rushing offense so far. And Jeff Tabish sticking with what he was going to tell me during the pregame as he hands off to Jerwin Johnson again. Johnson breaking tackles, breaking more tackles. That's going to be close to a first down, and that's going to put Stillwater already up to uh, 95 yards of total offense as they're already on pace for six, 700 yards on the ground so far, Dennis. Wow. That... As uh, Burris with 49 yards, Robert Earl Johnson with 21, Belleville 16, Drewin Johnson 9. Haven't seen Ingham try a pass yet, which Jeff told us he, it was going to be important for him to at least establish a little bit of a passing game to help build Brandon's confidence, not only for this game, but for the final two games of the season against Midwest City and Shawnee. 527 remaining here in the first quarter. Handoff up the middle. And that's going to be a short game. For Belleville, I really haven't seen Stillwater pass a whole lot this season, but I think if they uh, if they can establish a run like they've been doing, and then go to a pass and do it effectively, they might be a little uh, another step up from where they're at right now. Now, uh, not I'm sorry, go ahead, Dennis. Oh, they're a great team. Now, the one thing that we noticed last week was that was the first time that uh, Stillwater trailed at any time last week, and it looked really like uh, it really looked like that was the first that. Jeff Tabish maybe wasn't 100% sure of what to do because his team hadn't trailed at any point uh, in the season. We'll get back to that point after this play. Second down and eight, four, 440 remaining in the first quarter. Jerwin Johnson in motion. Ingham looking to throw for the first time. Passes tipped twice and incomplete. Number 75, that is uh, James Kappel, the tight end, incomplete. And it was actually, let's get back to that uh, point real quick. As Stillwater trailed for the first time last week, and it looked almost like because they hadn't trailed all season that they weren't really sure of how to uh what to do when they were trailing well once you get a lead even though if you have the cushion you have a a, a 10 point 20 point cushion you still want to try to establish a pass what that does is that that uh gives that uh defensive line and the linebackers it backs them up a little bit so that you have that cushion but you you still whether you're up or you're down you still got to pass a little bit so you can um have an effective ball game third down and eight 435 remaining here in the first quarter Robert Earl Johnson in motion, reverse, and that is snuffed out by the Nitro as Jerwin Johnson gets tackled for a huge loss. Give me that pin, John James, number 21. As John James made the... Uh, 
As the uh, it's gonna be fourth down and uh, Dennis, I'll go ahead and give you. We'll go ahead and switch pens here and remind Dennis that the mic is always on, so anything he says can and will be used against him <laughs> in the uh, court of law of the OMFL. Unfortunately, we don't have a uh, audio booth to be able to uh, mute the mic in between plays. So we fourth down and 17. Meanwhile, Ryan Henderson's going to be on the punt for the first time today. Little Mac is back deep. That's Larry McDonald. And that's going to be a short punt by Henderson. Not really a great punt. Goes out of bounds only at the 44-yard line. That's where Norman's going to take over. And not bad field position. We've got 339 remaining in the first quarter. Stillwater still leading 7-0. Back at Crooked Oak High School, Norman taking over after the uh, stop, after that previous stop. Huckabee's pass goes incomplete. Looks like it went right through the hands of Jared Singer. And Huckabee, after completing his first two passes tonight, he's now missed on his last four. That last stop by the defense was great. Nitro, if they can pick it up here and move the ball and, and try to get in the red zone, I think they can probably score. Are you surprised at all that Norman hasn't at least attempted to start uh, start trying to get any sort of a run attack between uh, Little Mac and Cote Farley and all the other uh, tailbacks? You'd think they would since it was early in the ball game, but if their passes are working, then uh, I guess their coach is going to stick with it. 334 remaining in the first quarter. Huckabee's going to throw again for Singer, and that is... I think he caught that. He's got that. He when it, If it doesn't work once, try, try again, and we've got... Uh, oh, somebody just threw a punch over there on the line, and we're going to have an ejection. Just saw one of the Stillwater players throw a punch. Dennis, I'm not sure if he saw that, but we had... Uh, I think number five is what we're being... Being told number five, I think that's Grady Richmond Jr. who threw a punch, and he got hit with a personal foul penalty last week. And, and uh, Victor Perez got into it, but uh, while they sort that out, the little post crooker thing, Huckabee's pass the, uh, it didn't work, went through Singer's hand, and he liked it, and they just uh, tried it again, and this time it worked. And that's something we've seen Norman have trouble with this season with uh, with uh, keeping their cool. Stillwater lost their cool as well. Norman had three players kicked out of a game about uh, two weeks ago. Let me double check. Yeah, in the Shawnee game two weeks ago, they had three players kicked out. Last week, we thought they had one of their guys kicked out, but uh, it was actually because of it. It was actually an injury, which unfortunately we don't have a uh, sideline reporter, and Norman also does not keep a coach in the booth, so it's hard for us to get the uh, to uh, keep tabs on the field. Uh, that's terrible. When you get a good play like that, and you have uh, you have problems with with uh, penalties and stuff like that, you it really it really hurts the team a lot. Now I'm expecting here. I uh, I would have sworn I saw one of the Stillwater players during the uh, scuffle. I don't know if David. I don't know if you picked that up, but uh, we saw the uh, we saw at least one player throw a punch. But apparently, I guess the uh, officials might not have seen that, as I have not seen anybody thrown out. And nope, I don't see anybody walking out. So somebody, we'll have to check the tape when we go back into uh, post. But somebody got away with a, uh, somebody just got away with a uh, punch. So after all that, it's going to end up being first down and 10 for the Nitro. As Huckabee's now up to 37 yards of passing. That play went for 26 yards. Clock is stopped right now. 3.20 remaining here in the first quarter. As uh, we're looking at some, we're talking about fashion sense a little earlier. I know Dennis wasn't here, and and uh, still waiting for play to resume. I'm guessing that they were going to. Uh, I can't. I can't tell you, Dennis, if they marked any yardage off on that uh, penalty. It doesn't really look like they did. It looks like they kind of waved it off and, and and put them where they caught the ball at. Looks like it's. Uh, looks like it's. <laughs> looks like it's offsetting. So after all that, it's going to be first down at 10 o'clock. has now started rolling again. We're ticking under 315 remaining here in the uh, first quarter. Flight down the play. Now, nonetheless, even though nobody got thrown out of the ball game, the officials are going to have to establish control in this ball game, especially in the next couple of plays in case there's more tempers flaring. Encroachment on Stillwater, and that's going to make it first down and five for the Nitro. Like I said before, penalties, they'll, they'll kill your team. I mean, they already got good field position. Then you get a penalty and, and move them up another five yards. you, you got to stay disciplined. So it's going to be first down and five. Stillwater called for an office for encroachment on that last one. Right now, 
Josh Huckabee, 3 out of 7 for 37 yards. As we're under three minutes to go here in the first half. Huckabee pump fakes. Looked like he was trying to throw to Singer. He's going to throw it. Nobody home. Got out of the tackle box. Got it past the line of scrimmage. So that will be, that will avoid intentional grinding. That will bring up second down. Now we'll check back into the uh, Norman Huddle. Lights slowly starting to take effect tonight. Now, Dennis, do you prefer to play during the day when the sun is still out, or do you like it when the uh, sun is down and the lights are on? To be honest, it really doesn't make any any, any difference to me as long as we're winning. <laughs> well, a couple weeks ago you guys played under the lights uh, against the Gunners. Yeah, my guys enjoy it, but as far as I'm concerned, as long as we're playing ball, I'm happy. So it's going to be second and five. Clock is stopped with 2.44 remaining. Another slant. Pass is incomplete as the uh, natural receiver juggled it and then got hit hard by one of the uh, Stillwater players. That's going to bring up a third down and five with 2.40 to go here in the uh, first quarter. I think this would have been the time where they needed to start running the ball because they already got the five yards on the penalty. They should have ran on the second down, seeing how, how many yards they can get on that. The passing game. You can do that when you're deep in, 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 in your own uh, territory. But right now, I think that they need to start trying to establish a running game. Do you expect to see a run here or another pass? I'm not really sure. <laughs> so it's going to be third down and five. Huckabee fakes that pass. First run of the day is going to go to Big Mac. And that's uh, Lamont McDonald. And I don't... Let's see. It's going to be a three-yard gain. So it's going to bring up fourth down and two. And... I would assume we'll see Norman go for it here down 7 nothing. Uh, do you agree, Dennis? I'd have to agree on this one. I, I, I would run it. I mean, being a, in their field position and, and, and you got the ball and there's two minutes left in the, in the first quarter, you want to move the ball effectively. So a, another run would be great. Okay, we're going to take a quick timeout. Norman's taking it, and we'll be right back. 2-10 remaining in the first quarter. Stillwater 7, Norman nothing. Back here at Crooked Oak High School, Nitro take a timeout, and uh, Dennis Albert back joining me here in the booth. Uh, are you a little surprised to see that they're going to try a field goal? Actually not. I, I think if they can get three points on the board, that'll give their momentum a, a little uh, boost, but uh, hopefully they make it. And uh, they're not even going to get a chance to uh, attempt it as this ball is, or the snap is bobbled. And that's going to be a loss in the play, so Norman loses yardage on that play, and a chance for them to get three points on the board, Mr. Albert, is, uh, goes off, goes by the boards. Of course, after the fact, you say, hey, I should have ran that. <laughs> as, uh, that. That now will hurt their momentum, as Norman had a chance at least to get three points on the board, and instead they're going to uh, keep that goose egg on the board, as Stillwater is going to take the field up 7-0. We'll keep it right here. Right now, as we take a look at Stillwater's numbers here, all you need to know is their running offense, 90 yards of rushing so far, and a touchdown. Stillwater takes over now, first down and 10. Ball will be spotted at the 24-yard line. Handoff up the middle. I think that's Belleville who had it. Belleville with the uh, handoff there. That's going to bring up a second and eight as the clock continues to run down to a minute 42 he left here in the first quarter. So 92 yards of uh, rushing offense so far for Stillwater. Nothing through the air, but so far that this, this game is a... Uh, if you read a book on how Stillwater plays a game, they've been following that book so far to a T. And uh, David Potter just told me it's not written in Braille, which is uh, good because uh, I don't know. I can't read Braille, and it'd be kind of tough to try to. F it's just be a little tough to follow a guidebook in Braille. Meanwhile, let's get back to the uh, ball game as another handoff. I believe that's Terrence Burris. Or Robert Earl Johnson, excuse me, with the uh, carry. Picks up four yards. Going to bring up third down and four. As we're under a minute to left here in the first quarter. I think if Nitro starts penetrating the line, they might stop him on the run. They might force him to pass. But right now, they're not penetrating the line very well. As the Nitro have had their trouble scoring, they got 11 points last week against Midwest, against, uh, Midwest City, although most of those points came in garbage time after the game had already been decided. The week before, only three against Shawnee. Before that, only two against 
Stillwater. And the week before that, they got 13 against the Gunners, but their touchdown came off of a defensive off of a defensive interception, so their offense has just really, really been struggling. Like we mentioned on the onset, eight points a ball game is all they are scoring. There's a handoff, and that may be another touchdown as Jerwin Johnson is off to the races. 25 point, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Stillwater. Jerwin Johnson with a 70-yard touchdown run, took it around the outside, turned the speed on, and he was gone. As we said before, Stillwater doing what they do best, running the ball, right off tackles. That is not what, uh, this is certainly not what uh, Jackie Smith and Robert Dennis and the uh, troops wanted, the uh, Nitro troops wanted, as we have seven seconds left here in the first quarter. Check, 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 check. Mike, check, check, check. Got me now? Okay. I uh, had a little bit of audio difficulties. Uh, I'm going to ask David, did you get my touchdown call? Not sure if we got my uh, touchdown call. I had a little bit of audio difficulties. We apologize for that. Henderson on to attempt the extra point. Kick is up. It is no, no good. good. We've got seven seconds remaining in the first quarter, and our score is Stillwater 13, Norman nothing. Back here at Crooked Oak High School, Greg Sherman, Dennis Albert with you tonight, and you're taking a look there at Drew and Johnson. 70-yard touchdown run as the Stillwater off running offense, 166 yards so far here in the first quarter and two touchdowns. Have seven seconds left here in the first quarter, and so far nothing is, not much has gone Norman's way outside of a couple of uh, passing plays by Huckabee. And we've got an uh, onside kick, and there's a ball still loose, and I think the uh, Outlaws got it, Mr. Albert. I think uh, number two, Orlando Spagner, came up with that. That is not good for the Nitro. That is really not good for the Nitro. Are you surprised that the uh, Outlaws decided to uh, run an onside kick being up already 13 to nothing? Really surprised. I wouldn't think they would have done that this early in the ball game. But a every coach has a different strategy. Maybe they want the ball back so they can do something different. And uh, Stillwater will get the ball first down and 10 up near midfield. Now the time has expired. Need to double check to see if the uh, clock should have run because the receiving team never touched the ball. Although it might have been... Uh, could not tell that. I think that might have been touched uh, as soon as it crossed 10 yards by one of the uh, Nitro players. We'll double check before we uh, head off the break. But uh, it is first down. They're signaling. And uh, we need to have the end of the... F and I think we're, we're trying to check if we're at the end of the first quarter or not. As uh, still a little bit of a... Uh, Shock there, and that's just the way that it, the, really the season's gone for Norman. Any time when things get when things go bad, they really really go bad, and we'll talk more about that on the other side of the break. We have played 15 minutes here at Crooked Oak High School, and our score is Stillwater 13, Norman nothing. 